Riches, words, and the fall. What in the world am I talking about? This is something that Jesus Christ did for us. Now, we'll talk about that and more. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Rod Hembry. And I'm Janice. I'm Ryan. And this is the weekend edition of Quick Study Television. I am so glad that you decided to join us today as we continue to go through the Bible. We're getting close to Christmas, and I'm very excited. You can tell, <laughs> probably tell that. Anyway, but uh, we, we're going to be studying today. Ryan, what are we going to do? Well, today I'm studying one of my very favorite animals on Earth, known scientifically as Chiroptera bats. Chiroptera. Mm -hmm. Chiroptera bats. Don't say that 10 times fast. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, and Janice, you studied today. What are you doing? I did. Today we're going to talk about corrosion from James chapter 5. Chiroptera bats and corrosion. Yes. Very interesting. All right, as we study this today, we're going to understand that we must not store up treasures here on Earth. Stay there. Many of the important figures of New Testament history feature only briefly in the actual New Testament. This is in large part due to the short nature of the New Testament. Practically speaking, long narratives were not easily recorded and passed on. Today we will focus on one such man, John, called the Baptist. John appears only a few times in the Gospels, but his role was undoubtedly a pivotal one in the history of Christianity. The Old Testament ends with a proclamation that a prophet like Elijah will come before the day of the Lord. And the New Testament opens with announcements of the man claimed to fulfill, at least in part, this Elijah prophecy, John the Baptist. The Gospel of Luke explains that John was miraculously born to a barren mother and a priestly father, and that his mother Elizabeth was a relative of Mary, the mother of Jesus. All four Gospels introduce John as a man called by God for a specific purpose, preparing the way for and announcing the Messiah. John's appearance and way of life is described like this. John wore a camel hair garment with a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. We're also told that John's ministry was enacted in the wilderness of Judea, partly explaining his diet. These details closely align John to the prophet Elijah. 2 Kings 1 and Zechariah 3 contain a description of this original Elijah, a hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. The account of Elijah's life also records that he traveled and ministered in the area of the Judean wilderness. John the Baptist's message claimed that he was the forerunner of the Messiah, and part of this message likely seemed a revolutionary statement within Judaism at that time. Being a descendant of Abraham and obeying the Mosaic law was not enough to be safe or pure in God's sight. At a time particularly flooded with a focus on being ritually clean, John the Baptist taught that everyone must live in repentance towards God, initiated by a public water baptism. Baptism was not a daily cleansing, but a one-time initiatory act that proclaimed one's desire to be cleansed inwardly by God. John the Baptist was eventually arrested and wrongly executed by Herod Antipas for opposing Antipas's illegal marriage to his sister-in-law. These details are verified by first century historian Josephus, who adds that this imprisonment took place at Machaerus.
live in a world in which words are worrisome. Indeed, we often say things that we do not need to say. And too often we do things because we've spoken them. Many times we must not say or do anything, but listen carefully to the real thing. Riches can affect us adversely. There are millions who have more income than most of the rest of the world. Studies prove the world has enough food to feed everyone everywhere and then some. But planes fly above the starving, delivering foods to those who can pay for it. The passage of scripture in James 5 reminds us to think of others before we consider ourselves. People who know and love God also know the big picture, and that is part of our life. James 5, verses 1 through 12. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into judgment. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. You know, James was a book that Martin Luther did not like. <laughs> Back in the Reformation, and this year, of course, we've celebrated the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. But it's something that we need to recognize that James is very good at. You know, as we read today, James is somebody who puts practical God's message and he makes it so we can understand it. And you know, we need to think this through. We need to get it. Get your Bible guide out so we can. If you don't have your Bible guide, you can write for yours and get on the mailing list for next year because we have some new things coming. And I can't say too much about it. I'd like to, but I can't. Uh, use the address at the bottom of the screen or go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. Biblediscoverytv.com. And when you go there, click on donate, make a donation in any amount. It'll take you right to the PDF file when you're done. Very, very good. You know, as we look at works of faith in our last couple of days, we need to consider this because it's really important. Riches and words and the fall. What am I talking about? How does faith work in your life? When we read these passages in James 5, riches and words and the fall. What are we saying? We must read James chapter 4 to 5 to keep up through the Bible. We're looking at James chapter 5 verses 1 through 12. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm asking you, Lord, right now. We need to hear you, especially, Lord, where this program goes. The stations that we're on the people that we see, the internet that we're broadcasting from. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you would help us and also the Roku box, Lord, and many other things. Help us to reach the people in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Look at James chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. It says, come now, you rich. Come now, you rich. He says, weep and howl for your uh, miseries that are coming upon you. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Now that is really interesting. As we look at this, we have to understand we must not, not, N-O-T, not, store up treasures in the last days. Don't do it. God will take care of us if we trust, trust, T-R-U-S-T, Him. We must trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Very important because so many people, and I speak now in Canada, in America, in the UK, in Australia, New Zealand, the, the, the countries that are well developed, and I speak to you and I say to you, we must not trust our riches. We must not trust the things we've built. We must trust the things God built. Now, what does that mean? I'm not telling you to go give your wealth away. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we need to understand what God tells us here. So the only way to really get that, let's go further because we need to figure out what is the Lord saying? So we go to James chapter five, verses four and six. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who moved or mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, crying out, the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Shabbat. You have lived on, or Sabbath, you've lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Now, really interesting. We often get caught up in everything we have. Everything we have, beloved. Why did God give us this wealth? Why did he do it? So we could spend it on ourselves? No. For what purpose are those resources given? Now, that's a good question. Those of us who have money need to answer that question. And let me tell you something. The average person in America has much more money than the person who is in Africa or the person who is, is in other parts of the world or in our own neighborhoods. We need to pay attention and we need to get busy. Isaiah 58, get busy. And that's why, by the way, this ministry, we, we tithe and we give to a ministry called Vision Led, which touches Africa, the HIV positive people, very important. Now, I don't say that because it's important that you understand when you give to this ministry, you're giving to us, but we always tithe on it. And that's very important. We go to the last part of the scripture. It says in James 5, 7 to 12, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it, it receives the early and the latter rain. He says, you also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door, my brethren. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end of end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. Now, this is very important but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. This is very important for us today. Patience, waiting on the Lord is good for establishing our heart. We would do well to wait on the Lord. And I want to tell you something, you know, I'm born in Missouri. That's the see me state. Okay. And I get that. But the important thing for us to remember, it doesn't matter where we're born doesn't matter what citizen we are. 
We need to get this, that our yes must be yes and our no must be no, and no way, no, no, uh, try to articulate hyperbole or anything else. That is so hard for us in America, but we need to hear the Lord. We need to come under the direction of the Holy Spirit and hear God, beloved. Very important. You know, I, I just sense in my heart, there may be people who have maybe abused that a little bit. Well, you know, the great news is that if we sin, we have somebody who advocates for us, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for me and for everybody else who's listening to me. And I ask, Lord, that they would join me in prayer and say, Lord, forgive me where I have exaggerated. Forgive me where I have taken drama as the king and made dramatic everything. Help us, Lord, to know the difference. Help us to understand that your word tells us the truth. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for those who don't know you, who are really, they're not understanding who God is. May they see Jesus Christ today. May they understand that if they come to Jesus right now and say, Lord, come into my heart, I believe you are the Lord of Lords. And I believe you died on the cross and you rose again to take away the cost of sinning. Give me eternal life. You know, next time on Quick Study Television, we're going to have a good time because we're talking about mercy and faith. Mercy and faith. Very important as Jesus talked about this. It's going to be a good one. Stay there for next time. Ryan, you're up. Well, today you and I are going to take a close-up look at one of the most amazing creatures on Earth. These animals can fly, hang upside down, and echolocate. I'm talking, of course, about bats. Now, interestingly, these beautiful and misunderstood animals create many issues for those who believe they evolve naturally. Bats are one of the most incredible and unusual creatures on Earth. And though these mammals share many common characteristics with other mammals, they also have some very unique features as well. The first noticeable thing is that unlike other mammalian orders, the bat order, biologically classified as Chiroptera, has many different species. In fact, there are over 1,100 different bat species, which make up one-fifth of all mammal species. Chiroptera comes from the Greek meaning hand wing and is a very apt description, since all bats can fly. This is another unique feature. Indeed, the bat is the only mammal which possesses wings. Most interestingly, the bone structure in a bat's wing is comparable to that of a human hand, as a bat has five radial finger bones, which are used to stretch the skin between the fore and hind limbs. Its hind limbs are equally unique, as they allow the bat to hang upside down from its small toes. In fact, this is a bat's default position. Probably the bat's most unique feature, however, is its ability to echolocate. While not all bats can echolocate, this highly sophisticated technology, used for navigation and hunting, requires the cooperation of both the emitting and receiving organs within the bat's skull. This creates a major problem for evolutionists, since they are tasked with trying to explain how the bat developed its sonar, or more importantly, how the species survived as a hunter while this supposed evolution was taking place. Compounding the problem is that the oldest known complete fossils of bats show indications of a fully developed echolocation system. 
Evolutionists also believe that the development of flight in mammals took millions of years, and that this process supposedly converted the forelimbs of the land-dwelling ancestor of the bat into wings, as four fingers of each hand gradually reduced in length. The wing membrane also had to be produced, step by step, with flight muscles and the numerous unique arrangements of tendons, nerves, and blood vessels required for the specialized features of the bat. If this were true, then the fossil record should reveal a series of transitional forms. However, no such fossils have ever been found. To the contrary, in fact, evolutionists describe bats as already highly evolved when they first appeared in the fossil record and the earliest bat skeletons, supposedly 50 million years old, are virtually indistinguishable from living bats, with fully formed wings. Bats have appeared to have always been bats. This, of course, lines up with the biblical record, which states that animals did not evolve, but were created according to their kind, and already fully developed. A testimony to which all fossils are giving. Evolutionists are having a really tough time explaining the supposed evolution of a bat since the oldest known fossils of bats are already fully formed with sonar and everything. And by the way, when evolutionists say oldest known fossil, all that really means is that they are the lowest found so far in the geologic record. According to evolutionists, these rock layers were laid down over millions of years. Of course, biblical creationists believe that these layers were laid down quite quickly as a result of the global flood recorded in Genesis. So according to the biblical record, these fossils aren't very old at all. The evidence for the youngness of these fossils was found in West Germany, where the remains of a rapidly killed bat was discovered. Amazingly, it contained, contained within its stomach was undigested moths. According to the rock layer that this bat was found, evolutionists would date it to some 40 million years. But this doesn't make sense. Well, of course it doesn't. It does make sense if you believe the biblical account, though. Very interesting. You know, uh, Ryan, when you begin to question some of the fossils and some of the things, and again, I think it's important that we, you know, there, there's uh, general science that says, well, this is, you know, 13 million years old, this is whatever. But, and, and you learn, you know, you pay to learn, and so it's, it's an investment. But when you read the Bible and when you understand what's happening, it's important that we realize that the fossils and the things they find are not necessarily what they're saying. In mm -hmm. other words, they're not as old as they're saying. They don't come with, you know, a date on them. Right. Now, some people say they do, but they really don't. No, they don't. You know, they really don't. And like I've said before on the show, the flood and taking Genesis as literal history, it solves a lot of scientific mysteries. It, Honestly. Yeah, it really if, does. If, if people would just accept it, they would realize, okay, this solves a lot of problems. Like, for example, the flood laying down the, the layers very fast. Yeah. Right? This solves the problem. Bats didn't evolve. Bats yeah, were fully really... formed, and these bat, this particular bat got wiped out by the flood, and it yeah. got buried very, very quickly. Yeah, that's, you and know. The moths in its stomach mm -hmm. is evidence for that. Yeah. How incredible is that? It, it yeah. really, find. really yeah. is. Yeah. It really is. I, I need to mention to you briefly, just as we're going along here, that uh, you need to get a hold of this. We're only offering this until the end of December. This is Unlocking the Bible Part 2. It's a DVD that I enjoyed doing. I've never done this before. I never did an Unlocking the Bible. I did the first one back last month. But this one for $25 or more, and uh, that's a suggested donation price, okay? $25 or more. And it helps us to get it to you. Uh, there's a lot of things in here, chapters of the Bible, questions in the Bible, people of the Bible. Who printed the first English uh, language Bible was made by whom and who finished it? Uh, and all of that is in here. But then all of the things that you need to understand when you read the Bible. Very important about praying, how to start uh, reading the Bible when you pray and all of that stuff. So it's in here. Get your copy, please. And uh, We'll look forward to sending that to you. Now, you did some study today. I did, and but it's very important that they ask for it by name so that yes. we know. The Undiscovered is, Bible, think, Part 2. Unlocking the Bible, Unlock Bible, Part 2. Yes, and I did do some studying and looked at James 5, verse 3, but let's back it up and start actually at verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded 
and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. So this is not talking about that it's wrong to have wealth. That's not what we're talking about here at all. But it's a state of mind. It's a thought of your heart in, I believe, in these days right now. And uh, as we get further along in time, we see that the systems of man are beginning to break down. Things that we have trusted in are breaking down. And we who've accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives fully must put our trust in him because the things of this world will not stay. They're going to break down and talking about our garments, our things. If these are the things that we're worried about and we're trying to keep them, these are the things that we can't take to eternity with us. And when we store things and hoard things, that means really we're not trusting in the Lord or our attention is on the wrong thing. This here, James statement about silver and gold is really paradoxical because he's emphasizing things that are not corruptible are going to be corruptible because silver and gold don't corrode. But he's saying your silver and gold are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you. Meaning you were dependent upon the silver and the gold to save you, but it can't help you. So these commodities are destined to perish. So our application for today is our only hope for now and the future is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is our provider. He is our protector. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's put our hope in him and not our stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that's absolutely true and uh, well put, well done. And that is something that we all need to understand. Jesus Christ is real. Jesus Christ is Lord. I, and I, I have to tell you that I am so thrilled. I mean, God, the, the longer that I have lived with the Lord, the closer he's gotten to me. And I haven't done things that are right. I've done things that are wrong. And God has helped me and he's moved me in and pulled me in here. And he's got me in this place and he's taking me up. And so hopefully by the time I die, if the Lord waits that long before he comes again, then I will be ready to meet him. And that's something that we all should do. If you need to know Jesus Christ, let me encourage you. You need to know Jesus Christ. Pray and say, Lord, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I need you right now. 